Hello again. Back to talk some more about taking a medical history. Uh, the previous video to this one was uh, all about the HPI, the history of present illness. And I'll reiterate one more time that that's the most important thing you can do. Memorize those questions, go through them in every history, and you're going to have a great start. As I said in the last video, the great thing about the HPI is you actually don't have to have any particular medical expertise or knowledge in order to do that perfectly. So I always say anyone, anyone can collect a perfect HPI. It takes a trained medical professional to get a good review of systems. Okay, so that's kind of where you cross over. So the HPI, you don't need to have, and sometimes it's even helpful not to have a differential when you're collecting an HPI. One thing that you fall into is you go into the room, you think you know what's happening, and... And so you jump to what you, to what you think is going on, and then you miss HPI questions. Let me give you a quick example of an experience I had that showed that perfectly, and then we'll get on to, to the review of systems. When I was a resident, um, I was helping cover the uh, hospital floor uh, with the internal medicine attending, and there was a patient on our survey, on our schedule, who was in for tremors. And he'd been admitted for tremors, and I read through the ER note, and after the ER note, they had they were suspicious of Parkinson's disease. He was an elderly gentleman having tremors and shaking, and so they thought maybe it's Parkinson's disease. They admitted him for an evaluation. Neuro had been consulted. Neuro had seen him, and the neurologist, the, spe the, the brain specialist, had seen him, and his note indicated, I don't think this is Parkinson's. It doesn't seem to fit to me. Um, and that's really kind of all it said. And so... The uh, internal medicine attending and I, we went and uh, to get our initial history. And so I sat down with this uh, gentleman and I, I collected the HPI. And I said, all right, um, what, you know, what's going on? And he says, well, I, I feel like I'm getting shaky. And I said, well, how long has that been going on? And he says, well, probably the last couple months. And then I said, well, what makes this worse? What brings it on? And he says, well, it's whenever I stand up. If I'm laying down or sitting down and I stand up to get something, I get all, all shaky and I have to sit down again. And right there, with that, just like the second or third HPI question, you completely change the trajectory of what it is you're looking for. Because what happened at the in the emergency room with the initial history is the whoever took that history went in thinking it was Parkinson's. It was an elderly gentleman complaining of tremors. And they're like, oh, this is probably a Parkinson's type thing. So they went in, they said, what's going on? I'm feeling shaky. And they okay, well, are you having a hard time walking? Like, yeah, I am. It's kind of hard to walk. And they started going down a review of systems to, to figure out. And they, they forgot to stick to the HPI. What makes it better? What makes it worse? Because upon asking him, well, what makes this worse? He said, well, it's always when I stand up. And all of a sudden, we've gone from Parkinson's disease to orthostatic hypotension. And that's what this uh, gentleman had. He had really bad diabetes with very high sugars, massive edema in his lower extremities. He had taken all his fluid and put it in the lower extremities and he was standing up becoming orthostatic which was making him shaky. We you know, got his diabetes under control and everything and, and he got better. He stopped having those problems. And so massive difference in the approach to that patient and it was all because of a simple, simple HPI question. I didn't have to know anything. I didn't have to have a differential. I just went down the questions. When did it start? What makes it worse? What makes it better? And with that, I had the information I needed. So that's an example of just how important the HPI can be. So you don't need to have a differential to take an HPI. You don't need to know anything about what's going on. A review of systems, which is what we're talking about in this video, is a little bit different because a review of systems is where a trained, educated medical provider chooses what questions to ask and which ones not to ask to narrow things down. And so which questions you ask in a review of systems depends upon your knowledge of the situation. So very frequently you're asking patients questions that they may not think are connected, but that they might be. Okay, so for an example, you could have um, a patient who's complaining of maybe frequent urination, and you go through your HPI and you get the information about how frequently and how long it's been going on, and then a review of systems would be you thinking and saying, okay, what things cause frequent urination? And then asking questions about that. So, for example, you might ask, well, have you been having any headaches? Now, 
For the patient, they might be thinking, well, why in the world, what does a headache have to do with too much urination? But as a trained medical provider, you're thinking, well, one thing that could cause frequent urination would be something like a diabetes insipidus or something, and, you know, brain tumors and that type of stuff could play into that. Um, now, that's a rare thing, but it's an example of how you would use a review of systems. So the review of systems is a systematic review of things that you think might help, okay? So oftentimes you can stop, start like head to toe and go through. So you, you take the chief complaint, whatever it is, let's say, um, let's say it's lower extremity edema and they've got some swelling in their legs and you think, okay, well, what is there in the head that could cause that? And so you might ask about headaches or that type of a thing. And, and how about heart failure? That can cause lower extremity edema. So maybe you'd ask about, well, have you been short of breath? Um, have you had any of those things going on? And you think, well, what about GI? And you know, you know what? Kidney failure can cause edema. Have you had any change in your urination? Have you noticed a darkening in your urine? Those types of things. So the review of systems is yes or no questions that you are formulating as someone who's trained to ask those questions. The HPI are open-ended questions asking the patient just to describe what they have. And so they're two separate things. HPI, you don't need to know anything. You can just ask the questions and get the information. A review of systems, you want to think through what might help bring this down. A really common example, really simple, would be like an upper respiratory infection. And so you have someone coming in and they have a runny nose and a cough. And so you're thinking immediately in a differential, well, maybe it's an allergy problem. Maybe it's an, uh, an infection problem. Maybe there's a foreign body. You know, so that might be three things you think of. And so you get the history, you find out how much it's happening, where, and all that kind of stuff. And then you would ask things like, have you had any fever? Because you're thinking, well, if it's infectious, maybe there'd be a fever. So have you had any fever? Do you have any pain underneath your eyes? Have you had any ear pain along with this? Um, how about any cough? Are you coughing? Um, those types of things. And so you're narrowing down the information because of the things you think it might be. And that's a good review of systems. So a review of systems that's sometimes not as helpful is just a complete review of systems for no reason. And so you want to do what's called a pertinent review of systems. You get the HPI, you have that information, you formulate a differential, and then you use a review of the systems to exclude or include other things that might be going on. So I hope that's helpful. Again, HPI, number one, easy to get because all you have to do is know the questions. Review the systems, help bring it down. And then with those two things together, 80% of your decisions are going to be able to be based off those things. Physical exam is helpful. Labs and those types of things are helpful. Um, but those two things are the most important things you can do correctly. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed these videos. Any questions, comments, uh, things you want to have added, videos you want to see in the future, uh, put them down below. Let me know, and uh, we'll keep doing this. So I hope you have a great night. Uh, this is Dr. Stokes for Bread and Butter Primary Care.